The original Seven and a Half Habits tutorial was created by Lori Reed during her time at the Public Library of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. Habit one, begin with the end in mind. Determine what your goal will be, then you can develop a plan to achieve your goal. If your goal is to learn Spanish, start by asking yourself a few questions. Do you want to learn Spanish well enough for basic communication, or do you want to become fluent enough to have in-depth conversations in Spanish? Your goal will determine what you need to do to achieve it and how long it might take. Don't worry, if your needs or life circumstances change, you can always modify your goal. Habit two, accept responsibility for your own learning. No one has as much invested in your learning as you do. Think of your education in all of its forms as an investment in your future. Value and take pride in your learning and accomplishments. How can you do this? Sign up for training or classes. Be an active participant by completing all of your pre and post work as well as participating in discussions. Read a how-to book. If you have a question, ask someone who can help you learn the answer. Habit three, view problems as challenges. When a problem comes up, do you typically think of it as another crisis that must be dealt with or a challenge that you can learn from? These life events can provide powerful motivation and opportunities to learn. Think of how much you have learned during your life so far as a result of the curveballs life has thrown at you. Maybe you have learned how to balance a checkbook, how to change a flat tire, or how to jumpstart a car. The most successful lifelong learners view every obstacle as a learning opportunity. Habit four, have confidence in yourself as a competent, effective learner. Everyone has to start from somewhere. Even Michael Jordan had to learn the basics of basketball. The words that you use to describe yourself will soon become your reality, so be careful with your choice of words. Don't say it or think it unless you want it to be true. Habit five, create your own learning toolbox. Ask any hobbyist or enthusiast and you will hear about a variety of items needed in their supply kit. There are kits for scrapbooking, camping, computer repair, household repair, art, photography, etc. But did you know that most lifelong learners have their own toolkit too? While not a toolbox in the traditional sense, here are some of the tools that are useful to lifelong learners. Books, technology, classes, mentors, friends, and web pages. Habit six, use technology to your advantage. Technology is a tool that should be used to make your life easier. Use technology to help you in your learning. You can find tutorials on everything from how to tie a tie to how to build a fence on the internet. You can download your favorite music to exercise to, or maybe you can even listen to an audiobook that you would not normally have time to read. Habit seven, teach or mentor others. The best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else. Not only is teaching and mentoring a good way to reinforce your learning, but it's also a good way to give back to the community. Habit seven and a half, play. Don't let the number fool you. Habit seven and a half is actually one of the most important habits. Successful lifelong learners know the value of play. Children spend a lot of time playing because it's important for learning and brain development. It continues to be important for adults as well. So play, be curious, and read.